okay? So I know a lot of you, oh, he's here. I know a lot of you experienced uh, working with uh, Microtik uh, Wireless, and not all of you have a good experience uh, using uh, wireless features and how to, you know, deal with the lots of features available and how to configure properly and troubleshoot wireless, uh, um, Microtik Wireless. So that's uh, the reason why most of you are using uh, the other vendors that I'm not interested to talk about their name, because they are my enemy. <laughs> but um, so I've decided to work on and, and wireless, uh, Microtik Wireless and how to troubleshoot. Uh, because uh, that's what I uh, experienced working with this uh, feature since when I remember 2005, six, and with those RB133s and uh, very old. Uh, so this is, yeah, me. <laughs> and when I started um, in 2002 with uh, um, Cisco and uh, other products like Ubiquiti, Motorola. It was, you know, just a dark uh, box. You couldn't, you know, easily troubleshoot. With Ubiquiti, it's a lot easier. That's what everyone's start with. It's just, uh, you know, plug and play a wizard, and it's it's done. Um, that's what I've started, the same as you guys. And in 2008, uh, I've got my first uh, Microtik certification. And uh, 2011, I um, had a chance to become a Microtech distributor. And um, uh, 2013 was my big move in Canada. And uh, I transferred uh, everything, my life, with my family. And um, there are lots of um, good friends I've had here that are sitting at the back. They're supporting me um, so great. And Daniel, another Daniel. Uh, Peter and uh, other um, of my partners who supporting me really great. Uh, it's appreciated and thank you guys. As well as uh, Microtik. Um, in 2014, um, the um, Microtik distribution uh, um, part as a value added distributor uh, start, um, ex uh, started and I expanding my uh, distribution by offering some uh, additional uh, services like training. And um, finally, 2015, uh, when Netwire founded. Uh, I'm a partner with Bell, Rogers, Cogent, and uh, uh, providing that service for ISPs, wireless ISPs, and businesses who are interested to integrate their service and centralize and secure their network with uh, Microtik. And yeah coming soon, later. So that's my presentation today about wireless. Um, so uh, this uh, chart helps you on how to troubleshoot wireless link. The first stage is when you start calculating the link. There's a link um, uh, for the point-to-point -point mostly. There's a link, and uh, if you log into Microtik website, you will find a uh, link calculated at the bottom of the page. By choosing the distance and uh, the location where you want to provide that, and uh, the frequency, the uh, products, you will find out uh, the place where you can find, uh, you can calculate, and it shows you if the link budget provides you reliable or unreliable links. I uh, recommend to do, um, you know, to try a couple of devices with different antenna gains to find out the most reliable device that can provide the um, bandwidth you require. Uh, as an example, I use the net middle in here with 24 dBA antenna gain, and um, the result is reliable for that distance. Some installation notes and tips that everyone has to, you know, uh, focus and uh, to get the um, uh, best result on the alignment and the uh, signal strength. First of all, the Fresno zone and the height you have to go to get the complete line of sight Fresno zone. 
then uh, the connectors is very important to use the same impedance uh, connectors on both uh, on all of the uh, uh, cables and antennas. Um, isolation and sealing, uh, because if uh, the connectors uh, rusted, it uh, affect on the um, quality and it increase the return loss. And the alignment. There are tools to align uh, the uh, antennas. There are uh, multiple lobes on uh, every antenna, the side lobe and the main lobes. Make sure you are, uh, to make sure you're getting the best alignment, you have to go with the, uh, some you know, adjustment tools and uh, signal restraints uh, that Microtech has already, those tools in uh, the router OS. And you can um, uh, uh, reach to the maximum, uh, uh, the best alignment by using those tools. And some uh, brackets that Microtech offer, uh, like this one, solid mount, that you can align the um, uh, radio uh, and antennas, like um, uh, LHG uh, is a, has, doesn't come with any bracket. You can align uh, horizontal or vertical, uh, and it's not convenient. But using this bracket, you can get the best result. And um, here, what you can see when the link register, it shows a TX and RX signal. And um, if uh, you're using MIMO, for sure you have chain zero, chain one, or if you're using triple chain, yeah, it will show you three uh, different results. And uh, based on uh, the, the goal in this one and uh, using this uh, part is to get the highest signal strength. And cable uh, length, that's an issue when uh, you have, I think, one of these in your bags. So you can increase the cable length up to, up to 1.5 kilometers, and you can um, also inject the PoE. So uh, there is a section in every uh, routers that you can find the health, uh, uh, router health. And in, the, uh, in every router board uh, uh, specifications, you will see um, um, uh, maximum consumption. Uh, you have to make sure you're delivering the right uh, uh, power to every routers. And surge protection, this is a new brand, uh, new uh, Microtech products. You can uh, um, uh, protect your uh, wireless equipment against any statistic uh, voltage. And the next stage, which is my main uh, focus on, is uh, configuring Microtech router OS. Uh, you can enable the advanced mode. By choosing advanced mode, as you can see, there are lots of features we'll enable in here. Um, if you look for this link uh, provided in 2012 um, in uh, the MUM, uh, US MUM, uh, that's a very good presentation to know how to configure point-to-point uh, -point and point-to-multipoint uh, in wireless and microtech wireless links, as well as uh, uh, different modes. So I'm not going to go over the configuration because I believe you know and how to do you know the basic configuration. So that one is a good reference. And the most important part uh, part when you go with this uh, basic configuration is to make sure the region you're located at uh, you're using the frequency you're allowed. In my critique, you can set up this, uh, the frequency mode as a regulatory domain. And uh, by setting up a country, Canada, you can choose installation mode. In the installation mode uh, type, you can use either indoor or outdoor. The frequencies and the output power based on the standards in Canada is different. So by, uh, and, and this is a f new feature recently added. Uh, by choosing that uh, um, um, option, you can make sure you're uh, using the standard and allowed frequency uh, and output power. And finally, that's, uh, uh, this location shows uh, if your link is registered by uh, showing that flag R means running. The next stage is registration table. Over the registration table, um, we need to focus on uh, the result on CCQ. The CCQ 
uh, should be the highest, close to 100% to avoid, to make sure there's no packet loss and there's no retransmission. And uh, the best way to, t uh, to test that um, uh, CCQ is running a software called bandwidth test. You can find the bandwidth test in uh, tools and bandwidth test. You can run it between two links. And when you're running it, the CCQ, if the configuration is great, will increase. And it shows the result 100%. And if it's not good, it drops, it reduces and it shows how much you're losing. The first step on registration table was general. In general, there is a feature, there is a distance that shows how far was the distance between two wireless link. The, where you can set up the distance is in advanced tab under uh, advanced tab distance. If you are using it in indoor, you, choose, you should choose indoor. And if it's outdoor, you should use uh, outdoor. And the link will calculate the correct distance if the height and the alignment set up correctly. Let's assume we have a wrong um, link distance. It could calculate uh, the, uh, the distance more than the real distance or less. If the distance calculated with wireless link is more than the real wireless link distance wireless link you have, it cause what? Retransmission. Because when you're sending a frame and you're expecting to receive a uh, reply, an acknowledgement reply, the link um, distance shows in wireless link status is four kilometer, but the actual distance is only two kilometers. So when you're sending a frame, the acknowledgement comes back in shorter distance, two kilometer. But router weight for the distance calculated, for the time calculated based on the, uh, the number shows in distance. So it uh, increased the latency as well. To avoid this and to fix this issue, you can go to, um, again, registration table, statistics, and see the result. The TXRX frame versus TXRX hardware frame. You can see it's four frames sent and 40, 41 frames retransmitted. And this result is because of the wrong distance calculation. To fix this issue, there are two solutions. First, the physical uh, troubleshooting. If you are using, uh, you're aligning your antenna correctly in the right direction. Second, if you have a, a, a line of sight and complete Fresno zone. And sometimes you have uh, refraction or reflection in terms of this, you have to make sure the antenna alignment based on those lobes are kind of face to face. In this case, let's assume uh, there's a mountain in front of me and there's a wall somehow or a tower when I just um, want to you know, bypass this mountain and reflect it on that building. So I can't expect on the other side to get a direction on the main lobe face to face through the mountain. So I can adjust my antenna a little bit to the mountain or to the tower and to get the result, a better result from the reflection. For sure it's using a higher gain antenna as a passive gain and more TX power as an active gain can help to improve the link quality. The second, uh, if we go to troubleshooting, uh, to the software com uh, configuration, there's a uh, feature you can choose uh, by frequency because uh, the interference is one of the reasons why uh, the link can't, can't calculate the right number for the distance. So if you have an interference with other uh, uh, access points or uh, radios around you, 
um, uh, that caused uh, some you know, miscalculation on the distance. So by changing the frequency using uh, uh, wireless tools, like a scan, as you can see here, alignment, uh, uh, frequency usage, and micro has some uh, other tools like um, a spectral scan and a spectral history so you can find the best frequency range. The second option that you can change is um, uh, the band. So if you, sh uh, you, can, you, if you think that the, the band, the highway you're using to send a lot of traffic through is not safe and it's bumpy, so the car is going through, uh, making a lot of accident, and you have to retransmit and resend the new frame or packet, then you don't have to use the you know, multi-lane highway. You can reduce it, use two lanes, and make sure all of the frames you're sending are secure and receiving the acknowledgement for each frame. So you can limit the, uh, uh, the band and use the lower band because you have higher TX power on lower bands versus the higher bands. And in my mode, because you're using uh, more than 120 megahertz, say 40 megahertz, 80 megahertz, or 160 megahertz, then uh, the chance of getting this collisions is more, or this retransmission is more. So we can reduce the, change the band and use the lower bands. And the next one, even if you want to use the wireless N or AC, you can reduce the channel width and use uh, 20 megahertz only. You shouldn't go with five gigahertz, five megahertz and 10 megahertz because it's not compatible with wireless N and AC. And it's not recommended to use uh, five gigahertz when you're using wireless five gigahertz A, N or AC. So better to choose five gigahertz A only and then uh, use five, uh, five megahertz or 10 megahertz. And a five megahertz and 10 megahertz because the width of the channel is uh, so uh, limited, then the power you can shoot the signal through is more, uh, more than the uh, uh, width on 20 and uh, 40 megahertz. So the distance will increase. If you have uh, uh, you know, more bandwidth, more throughput, and the previous configuration, but the retransmission was higher, in this case, you have uh, less bandwidth, but whatever you're sending, there's no retransmit. So this way, you may experience higher throughput. So don't push yourself to use the higher uh, uh, channel width. Give yourself a chance to use uh, lower channel widths. And uh, uh, every time when you're uh, changing uh, any of these features, you should go back to the registration table and check the distance and see if the right number appears, uh, show up in the distance. And the next one, the supported rate and basic rate. Supported rate is the rate uh, device used to transfer the data. Basic rate is the initiation rate. Means I try to connect to you using the basic rate of 6, 9, 12, 18. If all of them were selected, the ra uh, radio trying to connect using the higher data rate. So means the first frame sending from either access point or a station and a receive, it has to come back from the wider channel. The chance of fail and retransmit and, uh, is higher. Means I may lose the frame or I may not to receive the frame to send the acknowledgement. But by limiting the basic rate to the available, to, the, to six meg, the smallest one, I am make sure that I'm using the highest TX power with the lowest data rate, and I can expect to receive the, uh, the acknowledgement. As well as on wireless uh, HT, high transmit MCS, for wireless N and AC, by default, from zero to seven is selected. You can remove uh, all of them and keep only zero. This is the lowest data rate on wireless N and AC. That helps on the first frame you're sending on the connection, initial connection, you can get the better result and uh, um, uh, on the, on the uh, distance. 
And at the end, let us assume you did all of uh, this configuration. There is no chance. There is no not much better distance calculation. So adaptive noise immunity is um, the feature that you can um, sort of um, adjust the access point and the station to communicate when nobody else talking. You have experience. It's exactly the same uh, behavior when you know uh, human um, hearing and voice is working. So let's assume everybody's talking in this place, and we are all in the same frequency range. So when I want to talk to Daniel for end, let's say, and all of you are talking in the same frequency, the best chance for me to, you know, transfer my frame to him and get the acknowledgement to wait until most of you calm down and start sending the frame. So enabling, uh, by enabling this feature on both AP and client, you may uh, experience some overhead because the link has to calculate this process every time. But on the recent wireless equipment that comes with ARM processor with four core CPU like you know, that uh, M11 series, or M33, or on indoor uh, devices like CAP, or uh, yeah, CAP AC, it comes with four core CPU and each core is 880 megahertz. So there's no harm to keep this one enabled. Even though in, in indoor area, this is the best that I recommend everyone to, to keep it enabled. Because you may experience more, you know, interference and um, an indoor area more than outdoor. So this distance is very important. Uh, so on how to troubleshoot, you can check um, two paths. The first path goes to physical installation. The second path goes to registration, the uh, router OS configuration. And we did both. And after each change, to make sure if you get the best result, you can go through the previous process, test the CCQ, and look at keep an eye on CCQ result by testing the bandwidth test between two links. If you're getting the highest throughput, then you can leave it as it is, and your link is the, the best. Don't go any, any further. The next stage is a uh, registration table with signal. You can find signal by clicking on wireless registration table and then double click on the uh, station that registers client going to signal. So I split this to three different parts. The first part is TXRX signal strength, this area. The second part is uh, about signal to noise. And the last part data rates. You all know the best wireless link quality is when we have the highest signal strength. Is this right? So not always the highest um, signal strength is the best. Let's assume let me give you this example later when we're going to signal to noise. Because you see the result over there. And how we can you know, read this information better with signal to noise. <clears throat> with signal strength, again, there are two paths. If it's good, the number you're expecting to see, you can go to the test result, uh, to CCQ test, and see if the bandwidth you're getting is correct. If it's not good, there are two troubleshooting process. The first one is physical installation. Make sure the antenna alignment is correct. You're not connecting on a side loop to the other side. Height is important. Line of sight is important. Scan, and, uh, scan tools and frequency usage. Um, there are tools on uh, Microtik not supported by all of the products, only some of them. Uh, you have to look at the uh, manufacturer and the product 
the CPU if it supports spectral scan and spectrogram, I, uh, I believe, uh, in the uh, wireless chipset. If so, then you can run the um, uh, spectral scan and spectral history to find out the best available frequency. Based on this result, you can see the dark area, the black area, is the area that nobody used the frequency. So this is the best area you can go with. But is it supported in your uh, wireless link or the clients you want to support, you want to connect? If it's Mikrotik, yes. For sure, you can go through uh, this path. But if you're in Canada, no, you can't. Same thing for uh, frequency, uh, uh, the spectral uh, scan. With the scan tools, it shows the list of SSIDs and, uh, and the uh, frequencies they're using and how close they are to your access point by keep uh, looking at the signal strength and the noise floor caused by each of them. So based on this information, you can find and collect the best available frequency. You can use those frequency, first of all, it's important to use this uh, uh, check this frequency and uh, collecting the, uh, the best frequencies on both station and access point. Because not always the access point. You have any question? Because you keep laughing, I don't know why. Maybe you have a question. Okay. So, you want to make sure that uh, the frequencies on both station and access point are shared means they, they can understand each other frequency. It means if you're changing a frequency on access point, a station can scan and connect to access point. We can use the frequencies found in a uh, scan list. By adjusting the scan list, by the frequencies available on both the station and access point. This way, if the link disconnects by interrupting another interference, another new device in the area, the link can go through the DFS, dynamic frequency selection, and find the best available frequency based on the scan list, and reconnect. But when you're enabling the DFS, you have to make sure the frequencies used on access point are uh, available on the station site. The station always a scan to find out the available frequency. So we, no matter what frequency you're using on the, you know, uh, the frequency selection over here, but station always a scan to find out what access point you use to match and connect. And the access point, you can enable uh, frequency use uh, as, as auto. So it starts scanning based on the best noise floor and find out the available frequency to match and use for uh, the next available frequency. And the same as the other process, when you're done with the uh, best frequency selection, you can go through the process, uh, the test process, to see if uh, you can get the best uh, CCQ result. And the channel width, as you can see there, are different options available for 2040, CE, EC, XX. So the frequency you're using, if the next frequency to build that 40 megahertz used from above, the next frequency after the frequency you're selecting, we call it above control. If it's the previous frequency, the frequency before the frequency you're using, to use on your wireless, it's called below control. With below control, you can get lower bandwidth compared to above control. But sometimes there's less interference on below control. This new feature, XX, helping you to find, I mean, the device calculate and find the best available um, option. It's either below control or above control. The next step is signal to noise, 79. So who knows what is the best signal to noise? 
the higher? Yes, always. But there's some you know, uh, exceptions. As you can see, if the peak of an RF signal is somewhere near to the noise floor, the receiver may confuse the data signal with noise and result in data flapping. It means if you have a wireless link, and these, uh, the distance between uh, this wireless link is not far, so close, just convert it into human relationship and how voice and hearing, the voice you're generating is TX power. Your hearing is RX sensitivity. If I'm so close to your ear and yell at you, what happened to your ear? That's the highest, so not always the best. And it confused. Is this a noise or is this something I'm supposed to receive? So, to avoid this issue happening, you have some features to adjust. First of all, just be quiet. Don't generate that much TX power, right? So how can you reduce the TX power and make sure the power you're generating is enough for the station or the other side to hear you enough? Okay, this is how it affects on the noise floor, where you can find it. The noise floor is on main wireless and status. You can see the noise floor used by that frequency and that TX power. And if you go to, again, to uh, wireless registration table, statistic, you'll see the flapping, this data rate flapping. That's uh, the data rate flapping just uh, switching between different data rates so fast. Means what? means the frame you're sending, you don't receive it on that data rate. And you're retransmitted on the lower data rate. But even lower data rate is so high, it's so loud. I'm trying to yell more by decreasing the data rate. But does that help? No. So I have to lower down my voice, my TX power. As you can see, every Data rates, if you go to the uh, wireless interface and WLAN um, interface, the current TX power and some of the new devices, which is locked for uh, the US and Canada, you won't see this result. So you will see some uh, different TX power uh, based on different data rates. As you can see on one meg, we have 22 dBm, but on uh, HT40, Seven, we have 15 dBm. It means the TX power on 40 megahertz is lower than one meg. So, first of all, to troubleshoot this one, we still have uh, a physical installation. By choosing, if you can't adjust the TX power, you can reduce the active gain and uh, the passive gain instead of putting your hand and um, um, you know, copy your hand beside your ear to hear it better, you can use a lower dB antenna. Instead of using 30 dBi antenna, you can use 12 dBi antenna for both uh, active, for both station and access point. On the router configuration, you can go to TX power and use uh, either one of these options. The default is the um, uh, maximum TX power calculated by EEPROM. Um, and manufacturers just lock it to that default. But if you can change the, and uh, lower down the TX power by choosing the card rate or all rate fixed or using a manual, which again, it's not uh, optional on the new locked uh, products, but on uh, the old products, you can reduce the TX power uh, manually in here. And drop it to 10. Means all of the data rates uh, will drop instead of 22 to 10. 
And look, the result. Instead of 79 dBm on uh, signal to noise, it dropped to 28. And you can test the CCQ by running the bandwidth test. Sometimes uh, you cannot change the data, uh, the TX power. You saw this before. The EIRP, based on uh, the country regulation, calculated based on the TX power plus antenna gain minus cable loss. Means what? You have to adjust all of these together without setting up this uh, uh, frequency mode to country uh, regu uh, regulatory domain. Even though you use country Canada and use the right antenna gain, this will not work. You have to set these all together. So let's assume I'm using a 22 dBi radio with TX power 22. And the antenna gain it comes with the radio attached. So this option is not available for me to change the antenna gain, the passive gain. And the router is locked. I can't even go to the TX power to reduce the TX power. If the antenna gain is 14 dBi, comes with the device, it's 14 dBi, I can go and give it a fake number. Because in MicroTik database, in the wireless database, you know that the maximum EIRP uh, you can use in Canada is 30. So 30 minus 20 equal 10. Means it drops the TX power to 10. You can just... And the same result will appear. The other option that is available on some router OS based on the CPU, it's called noise floor threshold. With noise floor threshold, you can filter. If you see someone yelling at you and you have nothing to do, you can, you can do anything, you can filter your ear. You can hear it less, right? So this is the number you have to play around. You have to adjust it, change it, and then go back to the result, see what, how it affects on the configuration. If it lowered down the noise floor, means, oh, that's good. That's the number I, I was looking for. If no, if it increases it, increase it uh, TX power, means you just kind of, you know, make your RX uh, sensitivity more sensitive to hear more which is not good. So try an error. At least the control is built to manage by yourself. It's not like other products that lock the device and you have no choice but to follow. I saw sometimes people for uh, the installers put uh, two antennas in instead of face to face, one of them to the back. That result the same. I don't want to hear you. Okay, but that's the feature you can do. And after all, you have to go through the process again. And the last part, data rates. So when I'm so loud and I'm repeating something, either so loud or so quiet, and repeating something, and you don't have a chance to receive what I'm talking about, you keep saying, say it again, say it again, maybe say it again, say it again, means what? You try to be more direct to where the source of TX power comes from. So what you should do, what you can see, where you can see the result, this alignment or this data rates, either in here, or where the signal is, or statistics. The last tab, a registration table. This is a kind of, you see these flops? I'm gonna repeat it again. You see 12, 9, 12, 6. 
That's what, I tr what the wireless link trying to send the packet and receive the acknowledgement, but doesn't. So you tr try again. Maybe it sent another same packet on the 12 and receive it. Oh, then I got it. Then switch it back to the highest one again. So it can't make it uh, a good decision. It's not smart enough to understand, okay, I had no chance to send a packet on 12 meg and get a reply. So I have to switch it to 6 meg, get a reply. So we have to give the wireless the knowledge, don't use 12 anymore. Same thing in the statistics. You can see it's just flapping. But this one is on data rate HT MCS. How can you find out what to adjust, what to configure to get the best result? There's a table for it. Based on above and below control. This one is below control. This one is above control. For 20 megahertz, 40 megahertz. And based on the number you can see here, you can find out, look for the number, the throughput, the bandwidth, and find out which data rate is flapping. When you found the data rate, the unstable data rates, you can go to the router configuration. First of all, you find out wireless N and AC is not stable. So instead of using wireless N or AC, this is the above control, CEEE. -E -E. E -E -E C is below control. Or you can have a mix and match above and below. Part of it below, part above. So you can decide not to use unstable uh, uh, channel width to avoid that unstable transmission. Second, you can go to the data rate, HTMCS. Based on the numbers you found in here, you can find 0 to 7 is for the first 20 megahertz, chain zero. And then seven to 15 for chain one. Sometimes you find chain one is not stable at all. So you can go and disable chain one and just use one antenna. Sometimes you see some stability and lower data rates in chain one. So you can go and adjust the chain one based on that. From zero to seven, you see an unstable data rate transmission on seven, six, five, four. Remove it. Just force, uh, force it to work on the lower data rates and guarantee to receive the acknowledgement and avoid any retransmission. It's done. So I have two draws. One of them is for this RB4D11 with wireless to give away at the end of the month. And uh, the partnership program that I offer a free training course, um, anyone who's interested for a year, including the discounts for the hardware, who um, like to enjoy my training courses, uh, they can also use their card. I can have a draw at the end of this. Uh, uh, mom, and yeah. Any questions? Uh, sorry, wait for the microphone. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Hani, uh, oops, sorry. <laughs> Hani, thank you very I much. I know you. Yeah, I know you too. <laughs> so thanks very much, and I also um, uh, really appreciate you taking the time to, to explain all this. The, the registration table that you, the signal table that you mentioned, is that part of, uh, can, can that be found in the Winbox uh, software? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I can uh, show you in, uh, after this. Okay, very good. Yeah. Thank you. More questions? Thank you for your presentation. Can you go over the uh, frequencies which are allowed to be used in Canada and also because there are two models. Uh, has That's something, I'm sorry, I have to interrupt you. International version and US version. Yeah, uh, 
I got it. This presentation is about, you know, troubleshooting. Yeah, I know. If you it, want it, that it, it, information, you can find it in the wiki because this, this frequency is, first of all, is changing by the government of Canada based on the new technologies, based on the, uh, um, you know, new features and the frequencies. You can, uh, um, you know, Google it. You can find a lot of information. I, I wanted to know if you can explain for our audience, but maybe it's interesting because there are two versions of market available in the market, international version and U.S. version. U.S. version is more restricted, but there are also uh, uh, international version in, in, in Canadian market. So people should be aware what to use and how to use because it, it could result in, in some fines and penalties for them. Yes. Uh, so if you are with uh, uh, the international version, there's no point to be worried about because it's limited. The frequencies you can use is just uh, the frequencies you're allowed to use in Canada. Do you have any? No, the no I'm talking about the U.S. lock. The U.S. lock is US and Canada lock. It's locked. You can't change it. So it's peace of mind. With international, some, part, some frequencies are reserved by uh, Hydro Canada. I think it's uh, uh, 5,500 to 5,600 ish. As I said, you can, you can just uh, search for it and find out what is reserved, uh, what you cannot go through and uh, use it and uh, avoid using it by using the international version and uh, lock yourself in between those frequencies. The second option you have to always keep in your mind that don't go over uh, the frequency you're allowed. If you're using uh, the outdoor, I think on some frequencies that I'm not sure about, you can go up to 34 dBm instead of 30. I think it's above 5,700. But if you want to use the 5,100 and uh, up to 5,500, then the maximum you can go is 30. Again, do your search and find out what's uh, the new update. Um, he wants back. Thanks for your presentation. That was really good. A uh, question I have is, we have uh, out there some links that um, when, we, when, we first, <laughs> when we first talked, we've got great connection. Signal quality is well below 50, so we're down into the, like minus 30s at one end and not at the other. At the, at the station, it would be minus 30. At the uh, access point, it would be minus 40 or 50. So this is the signal strength. The signal strength itself, yeah. Now, would those adjustments be applied to you go into the station and make different adjustments than you do at the access point? Because you got the same tape with both ends, yes. right? Yes. As you can see here, I've got the same similar result. I have TX minus 34, the RX minus 26. This helps you, on, you know, to find out if you're there's something with the frequency selection because when you're choosing those frequencies, you have to make sure the frequencies is in uh, the antenna supported rate. Some antennas, they support 55, uh, 5100 to uh, 5500. Some antennas from 4800 to 6100. So if you're using that frequency uh, and it's not supported by the antenna, uh, that might be an issue. The other part is alignment. Remember the side lobes? Mm -hmm. So if I'm uh, connecting to you in a side lobe, it affects on this result. You see the receive from the access point from the other side is a good number, minus 26, right? Mm -hmm. But the send is not good. It means you have to work on your send. And this right, router means you have to go and align your antenna. The other one. Sometimes the TX power defective. The link distance is not so far. You have a chance to see each other and connect to each other. But if you go further, you, will, you won't be able to even hear anything. How can you see it by running a test, uh, the sig uh, scan test? Scan, yes. When you run the scan test uh, on a station on the, you know, on a device with defective TX power, you can hear, you can see the SSID, MAC address, signal strain, signal to noise of the other side. But when you switch over and go to the other side and run the scan, you won't be able to see the other side. 
Means what? The defective part can't generate any TX. Right, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have a question. From your experience, uh, what is a signal-to-noise ratio? Because I was thinking before the bigger is better, but you say it's not always the case, right? So from your experience, uh, which SNR is uh, the best, or well, range of SNR is the best for CCQ? Uh, for this SNR? Uh, for yes. the SNR, my experience between 20 to, uh, to 50, that's the best I have experienced. And as you can see here, Many experts agree that uh, an SNR measurement of 22 dB or more is, uh, is a valid RF length, but there's no hard and fast rule for this measurement. And this is ref uh, referenced from uh, CWNA Cisco um, uh, um, book. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, one more question is um, um, when we set up uh, a wireless link between two uh, radios. Um, you go to the main uh, router board, like, uh, and, and then like 2011 and so on, and then you go to the IP neighbors. Uh, quite often it gets listed, all the radios that's attached to it in the okay. LAN. Some radios don't show up, and, and I'm just wondering, what's a common way of, a, um, uh, what am I doing wrong so that it doesn't show up, or are there, so is, is there screen? It depends, okay? A new uh, uh, router was feature, I mean, not very new, it's about, you know, two years when uh, they come with uh, the interface list. Under interface list, they have a, a WAN and LAN interface list. So you can add the interfaces where you want to get the Microtik neighbor discovery. You want to communicate and hear the other neighbors and uh, the same thing. Tell the other neighbors over uh, MNDP, five, six, seven, eight, say, hey, I'm here. You might need to go to your interface list, find out if that interface you're expecting to, to receive the neighbor discovery is part of that interface list. Or you can change the discovery to all on all of the devices, if it's all under your control. Are there, sorry, are there um, a screen on the, on the radios where you can actually turn on and off? That, uh, uh, again, if you go to the discovery, there is a section you can say all yeah. or put uh, exception, not all. Not all means nothing. Just by default, it does uh, not dynamic. So you just want to go and to uncheck the uh, not and uh, the drop down goes to all. And then that'll do, like, if you have, like, WDS, it'll see it over the WDS links. That's what you're missing there, probably. Yeah, that's a good point. More okay. questions? Thank you. Mm, thank you, Hani, for your presentation.